Welcome back, everyone. This is Chase, and uh, joining me today is Gabby Okido, uh, the, up, the design, yeah, designer and founder of the Okido brand based in Salt Lake City. Thanks for joining right. me. It's, it's good to talk to you. Um, good to talk to you, too. When, when we first were talking back and forth about setting this up, we, we talked about this off air, but um, when I initially reached out, I knew you as a Salt Lake City-based brand, um, but then mm-hmm. was doing some digging, some background research, and saw a Herald Journal article pop up, and, and uh, the brand started in Logan, which uh, I had no idea. So uh, I think that's, in Logan. that's especially interesting for people in our program where we're here at Utah State. Um, but yeah. do you mind sharing a little bit about the background of, of maybe how you got into uh, fashion and apparel design and, and maybe your connection to Logan? Cool. So I'll start with the connection on Logan. So I moved to Logan, Utah when I was about 10 years old in 2001. Uh, I uh, moved from Ivory Coast, which is a country in West Africa. And my dad had a job at Utah State University um, working with plants and RNA and DNA, botanists. So we moved out here and yeah, I grew up in Logan, went to Mount Logan Middle School, went to Logan High School. So. I'm sure some of the students that from Logan will understand. And yeah, so how I got into apparel design is through my mother. She was a seamstress when we lived in Ivory Coast. She had her own atelier, which means like a little workshop. She would make custom pieces for people that would come in. I mean, whatever they wanted to make, it was mostly women's wear, but she also did men's wear. So anything that could be fit on the body, she would make. So that's how I kind of learned that anything is possible with apparel as far as fit, cut, and all that stuff. So basically, I would say I was taught for my mother. I didn't go to any schooling or anything. So you guys that are going to school, like, that's amazing and awesome because you can learn so much more and so much faster compared to the way I did it, where it was more like learning it as you go. So, yeah, mostly I would give the credit to my mom to give me that, you know, that sense of, anything that can, that can be made with apparel, but then I kind of pushed on my own way too. Yeah. How important was it for you to see product being made with, with your mother taking that ver- really hands-on approach? Mm-hmm. Um, some designers never sit in front of a sewing machine. You know, they sketch yeah. something out and then yeah. they send it to a factory and say, make this thing for me. <laughs> How was it for you? You you kind of started the other way, very hands-on. And what, mm-hmm. what impact did that have on you having this foundation of of making product yourself? Because I would say is for me it was normal. I thought everyone did that. I thought everyone's mothers would make their stuff, their school outfit. Because when we went to school in Africa, it was you had to wear it was private school, so you had to wear uniforms. So all that stuff I thought it was normal. Like you get your stuff made and you wear it. But as I got older, I realized that whatever my mother was doing was kind of different, you know, making clothes is not what everyone does. So I would say once I started the brand, I was, I knew a lot of things. So let's say if I would, for now, it's more like sketching and sending it to the factories and my pattern and stuff, but I know the whole process. So it's not like they can like tell me, no, this is how you, this is how you do it. So I know the whole thing. So when I get my final product, it's way, it's like 90% perfect compared to like 50% where you have to go back and forth and you know, you don't know the process of making the stuff. So it's, I would say it helped me, my process of making it much easier from, from concept to sample to final product. So what, what were some of, or who were some of your, um, what were some of the brands or labels that that were interesting to you? Or when did you start to develop an interest in apparel in particular? I mean, you saw your mother making it, but were there yeah. were certain brands that you saw that you realized, oh, that's cool. I could do that. Like, that's something I, I yeah, could get yeah. into that world. What, what was that moment for you? Uh, I see. So as, us as a family, you know, um, my background is Congolese. And if you look it up, Congolese people... Dressing wise, it's like a big thing for us, you know, how you look is how you do. So I would say when I realized, oh, I have this story. So we went to, I think, JCPenney's when I was like, I would say 11 years old. And I wanted like kid stuff, you know, Nickelodeon with all the, you know, the, 
the cartoons that were at that time. And my mom was like, no, I'm not getting you this. And she got me a Ralph Lauren um, button up, you know? And I was like, this sucks. Like, this is terrible, you know? But from, I had that, I had that piece for about 10 years of my life. So that made me realize, like down the road, I realized that there are certain things you buy, not because you like it, but because of the, how it works with your lifestyle and your body and stuff. Because that t-shirt from Nickelodeon, whatever it was, I would have had it for like a year. So I started to learn that people make certain things for certain purposes. You know, the price might be higher, but it's for the long run is much better. So that was a lesson for me. But then my brother was super into brands. I mean, you can name it, all the brands. There is I probably can say so many brands here that people won't know. So there's like this Japanese brand called Ivisu, which was huge for me when I was a kid, you know, just the stuff they would make. I mean, um, there is Staple Design from Jeff Staple. Mm -hmm. He inspired me when I was young too. I mean, you can blend it all in there. There's so many brands. We can go on and on about this. But as far as like inspo, I would say my brother and mom that got me into brands and design. I was like, look at this. Look at this cut right here. See, this is what you're supposed to buy. Don't buy it when it's made like this because that's cheap. They, you know, they took, they didn't took all the time to do the, the cut on the sleeve here. So I learned it from just being around my mom and brother that was just way into fashion and like just the construction of clothes. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you started the brand in Logan and we'll get into that process and how you did that, yeah. but mm -hmm. you, you probably could have had every excuse not to start it there. Right. Logan, oh, man. Not, Logan's not really a, a fashion hub by any means. No, right? not um, at all. So, you know, I guess what really drove you over the edge and motivated you to start something when you were in a community where you didn't see there's, there's not startup brands all over the place, fashion brands. And even in Salt Lake, there's, there's not fashion brands popping up all over the place. So what was it that drove you to, to go and say, I want to be a part of this and I'm going to, I'm going to start something. Oh man, it was just, so I finished college and I was like, you know, my, my drive, you know, going to school and stuff was playing soccer. I was a big soccer guy. I played soccer my whole life, got a scholarship, went to a really good school. But when it came down to like entering the draft and really getting into pro soccer, it wasn't really what I wanted. And what I really wanted was to get into clothing, make my own brand. So I moved back to Logan where my parents were because I had nowhere else to be, you know, with money and stuff. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start this brand here. So it was basically just drive and de determination. Like I was not going to take no for an answer. I know starting in Logan, people are like, what are you doing here? Like go to LA, go to New York. That's where everyone starts. So it's like, this is what I have. I'll make the best out of it. You know? So starting out, basically I'm going to tell you how I started this whole thing. I didn't have any money. Um, my mother gave me a Donian Burke bag that she got from the DI. She's like, this is valuable. Someone would like it. You sell this on eBay or something and you make some money. I sold it for $75 on eBay. And that was the $75 that started Okito Brand. Hmm. So wherever there's a will, there's a way. You know, these students are going to school. Maybe it's to impress someone or like if, if, it's, if it's in you, you'll do it. There's, you know, so for example, you guys are helping them so much in, as a way of like starting things. But even if they don't have that, they still have to have their own drive to, to do something, you know. And it's simple. It sounds simple, but the hard part is actually doing the things, you know. Like I said, it was $75 that started my fashion thing. So, yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you can have all, all the skills in the world, but if you don't put that pen on the, on the paper or go out and make that call. It, nothing's going to happen. Exactly. Um, what, so, so you get that $75. What, mm -hmm. What's your next step? I mean, no, there's, there's not really a playbook. There's, there's a lot more resources now for how to start, you know, a, a, a label or brand or start yeah. your first collection. There's a lot more to, to find online. Like where did you go from there? You got your $75. How, how'd you start? $75 and $75 I sent, I would, so after I got that money, I was like, all right, cool. 
So I need to get my samples. I don't know where to get samples made, but I know there's a way. Someone did it, I can do it too. So I sent about a thousand emails, I would say around there, about a thousand emails to anyone I can find online. Cause you have Google, you can type in, you know, like I would look at the tags and I would look like at the little numbers, the few numbers, and I would type that in on Google and it would take me everywhere. So I was just throwing my shots everywhere I could, you know? So I sent about a thousand plus emails. I got about 50 email back. They were like, yeah, we, we can help you, but to start uh, sampling, we need to get your whole um, collection so we can give you a price on everything and everything and that. So I could tell it was kind of a close um, business. Like people weren't gonna tell you anything they wouldn't tell you where they get their stuff made. You kind of had to dig and find. So I, I just kept digging, kept digging, and fell in the hand of um, this website from a T-shirt that I saw. It had the, it had actually the, um, the website of the factory where they make it. Actually, the phone number. Hmm. And I was like, all right, let me give him a call. So I started asking around. So how much? Because I, I, I by that time when I had the seventy-five dollars. I designed the whole collection already. My first collection, Drop 001, was already done, but I was looking to get samples made. And, and was this you know? sketches, you know, on, on or Illustrator? What, how, yeah. how extreme was it? I, kn- I knew nothing about Illustrators. I knew nothing about Photoshop. It was all on pen and paper and patterns. Hmm. So pattern is, is the money, is, is what you have, you know. So I had my patterns and I was like, this is, you know, this is how I want my t-shirts to look. This is uh, I want the branding to be and this and that. So yeah, I I just basically hustled, man. Like it wasn't like where it's like, all right, well, thank you for this. And I was just kept looking, and next thing you know, I fell into a place of someone. I was like, yeah, I can make a sample for you. What do you have? I got these pants right here. They're like, all right, so it's gonna cost a hundred dollars. Then it was like, whoa, okay. Then I found someone that could make it for me, and next thing you know. I'm sending my patterns over and my, my samples are being made. And it took me from start, I would say about five months in, and there was a lot of sleepless nights because these people are overseas. So you don't talk to them during our day, you talk to them during the night, the night here. So I, had a, I picked up a job in Logan, Utah. Most people know uh, Great Harvest, that's where mm-hmm. I worked at. Yeah. So, and it was an early morning, um, Early morning, early, early morning. So 4 p.m., 4 a.m. you're there. So I would probably sleep from like 6 to 12, wake up at 12 uh, a.m. and talk to my suppliers, you know, can you do this? Can you do that? How about this and that? Then at 4, I would run my bike down and I would be at work until like 2 p.m. Do it all over again. So it was just... It was just the will, man. I, I, just, I just knew it needed to be done and I wasn't going to get help from someone else at this point. So I was like, I just need to get it off the ground first. So. I, I, like, I like what you said there at the end. Do you feel like there was just something inside of what you where you're like, this brand needs to exist and that was what was driving you to get it done? It's like, if, if I don't create this, you know, with my own perspective, my, you know, what I can bring to the table like no one else will. So I need to do this. Is that something, is, is that accurate to say? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah. And it's the mindset of the immigrant too. What my, my, what my parents instilled in me, you know, if you want something, we're in the best country in the world to get your dreams made, you know? So they're like, go for it. And it's just experiences through my life. So like I said, I played soccer a lot and it was like, all right, so how are you going to go to school, um, university? Oh, you can use soccer to pay for university and get an education. I was like, all right, that's my goal. And since I was like, I was 14, I was like, I'm going to go to the school. By the time I'm, you know, ready to go to school and that's the school that I went to. So it was just through life experiences. When you work hard and get something, you understand how things work. So that was the mentality I had, you know? So I knew that this, this, this equals that, you know? So you you can always make it happen as far as just the will you know right so that's just something that was instilled to me since my parents you know coming here you know and all that stuff right so you place that first order 
um, the product yeah. comes, then you got to sell it, right? Like, what what was your thought process there? You know, obviously you'd you'd been thinking through that, and uh, you had to have had a plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's when it becomes real. It's like you got product. Now, what do you do with yeah. it, right? So, what you know? How did yeah. you start to to get those first customers and and build some loyalty, build this brand, um, you know, build some attachments with with people? Yeah. So, I mean, um, just reaching out. Like, I'm I'm not bad at reaching out to people and showing my my stuff that I'm proud of, you know. So, I reached out, and that's this was when the early like Instagram brands were coming up. So, I was an Instagram messaging who I could hey look at my stuff hey look at this look at that and my first when I first released it I debuted I debuted the collection at the Bridgeland fashion show Mm, and that's that's where I started that's where I did oh I can't remember the lady's name but she's amazing I would forever be grateful for this lady so she she's like you can present your brand and stuff you know and that was my marketing you know I wasn't thinking like I need to be there in New York. I need to do this, and I was like, just start little by little, and people will notice, you know. So the selling part, it was it was the easiest part for me because all I had to do is show a product. That's pretty simple, you know. It it does take confidence, yes, but it was like all this stuff that I've done. I'm not gonna just stop here when I when it's time to sell now. So. I use all the the resources that I could, Instagram, Facebook, friends, emails, whatever, you know. In my first collection, I made, I think it was about a six-piece collection, and each each of them was like 30 pieces. So I pushed it. I pushed it hard, like, let's get it. Let's go. Like, here's my stuff, you know, here's my brand. Right, right. So when, mm-hmm. you know, you got that, that first sale, right, um, I don't know, what did that feel like to, you know, you had this idea, you had this concept. And someone bought it, right? What felt was amazing. that feeling like? Felt amazing. So we, I opened up the website and I was like, you know, all my friends like, yeah, I'm going to get it. And by the way, people that say they're going to get it, most likely don't get it. That's just how it works. <laughs> yeah. They just kind of just hype you up. But I waited about two days. And on the second day, I heard that, that chime on my phone. And I was just like, it was someone that I didn't know. And it was, I think, in the Midwest somewhere. I was like, what? An order? Let's go. So this one person, there's millions of people in this country. Let's go. Like, let's push it. Let's keep going. And that, you know, that's, that's the drive. The littlest things, you know, can really make you do more. So, and I have to say, too, my first collection, I released these fans that kind of blew up. It really was like different than something that people have seen and that helped too that I was not bad at making something that was seen but not seen in different aspects so basically it was a pair of pants you know the jogger style was really popular so I had a jacket that had the clips at the end you know those jackets that just you can just clip it at the end yeah so it was the 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 waistband of the jogger so i just wrapped it around oh, the yeah. jogger and put a clip there and that was it and i was like whoa revolutionary but no it was just something that i seen on the wrist and i put it on you know the the hill so that's yeah that's what it was wow that's it it is amazing that it's like one thing you know yeah one new yeah, concept just, can can propel you right um yeah what um i guess what what was that moment for you when you you saw someone wearing your product and you didn't know them. It was, did you have a moment where you saw someone wearing something on the street for that first time? And, yeah. and it became, yeah. you know, you talked about, you know, that first order, but it has to feel mm-hmm. really good when you see someone walking down the street, wearing something that you made and you don't know them. They don't know you. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. Well, this is my experience with that. The first people I was like, yo, I love that shirt. Would you, you know, I would act like I would tell them, like I made this shirt and they would be kind of weird out. Like, all right, cool, bro. Like, whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, because think about it. When you buy a t-shirt, you don't expect someone to walk up to you like, no, dude, I made that. You know, it's yeah. like, all yeah. right, like, cool. Thanks for the shirt. So it was just a surreal experience to see that, you know, like someone is actually wearing it because they like it, but not because they're my friend or they're like, oh, I want to support this guy. Oh, this is nice, you know. So I think my first time was in Salt Lake because – and Logan, I wasn't getting sales. Let's be real. Um, right. People yeah. from Logan wasn't really, it wasn't 
people at the would buy. So um, it was at a concert here, and I walk up to the guy and he's like, oh my gosh, yo, like, I made this shirt. This is so dope. I'm so happy that you're wearing it. And I took a picture with them, and it was cool. But I realized people get really weirded out when you walk up to them. So nowadays, I just kind of <laughs> look and just admire. Yeah, yeah, just take a mental note. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, and the company started 2014, is that right, in Logan? And then you made the transition down to Salt Lake. When was that? Uh, it was 16, 16. 16, and moved to, yeah, I moved to Salt Lake. Right, right. Um, what? That was so the when, goal all along. Right, right. Um, when you, so you, you know, you're starting to build the, the collection and the brand itself. When did you give, I mean, was that first collection did it have the Okito name? Was that always yeah. there at the beginning? Oh man, I starting out, I had so many names and I was so indecisive for so many months. And I was like, let me just use my last name. I'll be stuck with it forever. And I'm not going to change it. And once I have a name connected to it, I'm going to go as hard as possible to make that name known for what it's supposed to be known for, you know? So that's, it was like a non it was like a, all right, I'm going to just go and name it Okito and it's going to stick with me. Right. We, we talked a little bit about this off air and, and I wanted to save the conversation for when we started recording, but um, we mm. talked a little bit about this, this word <laughs> streetwear, right? That is now oh, so yeah. per- pervasive, right? It's, it's a word that everyone yeah. uses to, to lump labels and brands and collections all under this one umbrella. Um, you can you can share a little bit about what you think about that word um but i'm mm-hmm. i'm curious you know when you were creating this collection creating the brand what did you think you were what did you think the brand was cuz i you know a lot of people might look at it and try to lump you under oh it's streetwear right or you know but i'm curious where do you see yourself fitting within that and i'd love to also hear your perspective on the word streetwear and what what you think that means so first first question so basically i i'm a designer myself so it's weird to say i'm a streetwear designer because streetwear is just a way of being basically just a way people call it urban to put in a box or whatever Mm -hmm. but i'm not an urban designer i didn't grow up in any urban areas i grew up in logan utah right streetwear is like that attitude like you know gas attitude or whatever like but i'm just like my closest designer clothing why when gucci makes a pair of pants and they show it as in the streetwear sense they say high-end streetwear but how come mine is just streetwear what's the difference mm. i make i do the same process all by myself than they do i make the same quality like just maybe just a better quality as they do but it's just because of the who I am. Oh, he sells his pants for 60, 70 bucks. Oh yeah. That's streetwear. That's like, you know, that's where you can see at zoomies, but that's not my goal. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be in that box where people see me as like, Oh, it's streetwear. No, cause streetwear is cool now, but once it becomes normal, someone, something else is going to come to be edgy, to be cool. What is it going to be? Oh, um, high fashion is the new streetwear and streetwear is just a regular. So it's just perspective. I, and I don't like to be called a streetwear brand because it just makes me look like a certain thing and that's it. You're done. You're there. Right. And you're right. in that box. Oh, I love that. So so what, not, what you, not a fan. Yeah. So what, so what would you say you, or I guess when you created the brand and the first collection, what did you want to bring that was different from everything else that was out there? You know, it's hard to say, I want to show, I want to bring this to the industry and make it different. It was just what was in my mind. Like, mm. it's hard because I don't really go out and compare to all these other brands like this is, I'm going to be like this. No, it's, you just come, you just bring out what's in your mind. So it's hard to say, I want to bring this to the industry. I want to bring that because it's really easy. Let's say one of your students, right? You give them 50 grand to start a brand. They can do really cool stuff. It's going to be like, whoa, look at that presentation. That's revolutionary because they have the money. So it's not about bringing something, changing the industry. No, it's just about what can you contribute to the industry? What Mm -hmm. can you bring to the industry? Because 
there's no such thing as changing because it will always change. Minds change. There's no such thing as I'm going to, I'm going to bring this. It's going to be so different. Like look at, for example, Jerry Lorenzo and, and Virgil and Off-White. It's all remixes of things. I mean, don't tell me that it's the fear of God new t-shirt that is essential on across. It's so revolutionary. It's so crazy. Right. No, it's, it's just, it's, he just like that fit is people that are like, um, I would say from the punk culture, they used to wear baggy things back in the UK with trench coaches and, and coats and stuff. That's, that's the end school. So everything is recycled. There's nothing new. It's just how you do it. Right. Well, and and so much the way of, you do it in someone's eyes. Yeah. Right. And so much of it is story driven, right? Um, exactly. So I, I'd be curious, what are some of the stories that you've loved to tell? I know w- the one I think I, that got me acquainted with your work was, was the cold shoulder, right? And, uh-huh. and yeah. really pulling, you know, pulling on that jazz influence. Um, if people haven't seen that, you know, I, I, I'm sure you can just search cold shoulder Okito and, and that, <laughs> but yeah. But, um, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm curious, what are some of the stories that you want to tell? And, um, you know, the cold shoulder is one of those stories. What are some of the other stories that, that, uh, you're passionate about and that you want to tell through these collections? So I don't know if anyone, everyone knows the story about the cold shoulder. They might understand the design aspect, but I kind of want to tell the story of the cold shoulder. Yeah, that'd be great. So basically, this is before the jazz came out with the Mountain Edition and all that. So this was way before that. It was a year before. So before coming to the States, my dad would show me, like, you come to Utah, this is Utah. And I would be so happy he would send me jerseys and Carmelone. So that was the inspo there. But the story I was telling is that I was like, I would reach out to the jazz players and they would hit me back. Yeah, I love this. I love that. So like, all right, when can I get you my piece, you know? I'll never hear back. So that's why I came up with the design, the cold shoulder, because I was, I would always get the cold shoulders from them. Mm. So I put that on the sleeve and I would say that that was a story I was telling because I wasn't getting any love. So that was the cold shoulder that I was getting. So I made, I turned it into, I turned the frustration into the design. Wow. Oh, I love that. So that's That's, what it is. That's powerful. And as far as other pieces with storytelling, it's just basically my, most of my storytelling is just the brand name and the brand logo. I'm, I'm not going to say every piece I make is to tell you a story. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a brand. I can sell you a white t-shirt with my logo on it, just like Ralph Lauren. So my story is the old copy, which is the logo that I use, is an animal only found in my country in the DR Congo, and it's very special to us. And that's the story I'm telling people that when people think Africa, they think of like, you know, poverty, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's special there. We have special things. Like, look at that animal. Where else can you find it? That's our treasure, you know? For example, American Eagle. What story did it tell? When you see American Eagle in another country, people are like, yeah, the Eagle, America. Yeah, you know, great. That's the story. So I'm telling my story too. I love that. Oh, that's great. Through, Through my logo, yeah. Yeah. Are there any other, um, you know, in addition to the, the brand story, which you just talked about, are there any other collections that, um, you know, especially resonated with you or stories that you wanted to tell? You know, I love that insight that, you know, from the cold shoulder collection, are, are there any others that, that really resonated with you or resonated with people that really took off? Um, I would say, let me try to think, man, we, we had a lot of collections. So let me see. So I did a collab with this artist, this probably one of my favorite artists for a long time now. His name is Jack Deveru. He's from New Zealand, but he's stationed in Australia. So he made a piece for me where he basically told his story and my story in a design. So it was, oh man, I I have to show this to you. So he, he drew a picture. They had the copy in it. It had my country's flag in it. It had Real Salt Lake um, symbol in it because that represents Utah. It had uh, the fern from New Zealand. So that was like a story itself. 
in it. And he we, he drew one face and another face which represented me and him. So that was like something that, and I put it, so I put it on a, um, what is that? Uh, it's not coming to me, but the neoprene. Uh, so I put on a neoprene fabric because in New Zealand and Australia, they're big on surfing there and, you know, and it was waterproof. So that's the story I was telling, like, you know, this guy is from there. I'm from here and we're blending that all together. It's amazing, amazing concept. And it hit really well with our customers. I love that. So here, I'll show you. My wife just brought it to me. So see right there. So I can oh, yeah. explain to you yeah. all the details on here. Yeah. So this right here is the beehive, and that's the guy's beanie, and that's the beehive for the yeah. Salt Lake City. Yeah. This right here is the Real Salt Lake crown. They have a crown mm -hmm. there. This dude with the Afro hair is represent my black heritage, you know, the Afro. This is the New Zealand fern right here, because he's from New Zealand. Um, this is the Okapi right here. Yeah. And that's the, uh, uh, and his stripes that he has, mm -hmm. it's kind of this thing stripes in the back. And right here is the country's flag of Congo. Right. And on the back, we have this. So it says Okito and Jack Devereux. And he has me and him on there. Wow. Yeah. And here we have just a woven tag right here that runs across just on one side. And we have the zipper here that's here. And you can open it fully here too. Yeah. So you can fully insulate the jacket i don't feel so like i've ever seen too. i don't feel like i've ever seen people use neoprene like that yeah yeah i figured i was like um because i grew up i, I mean i grew up, i went to uc santa barbara and i saw mm -hmm. surfers there yeah. and i was like all right let's work with that fabric people wear it so i'm sure i can make it comfortable to wear it on the skin too well it's like you said right nothing is new but things can be reinvented and recycled and uh reimagined Right, it's like neoprene has exactly. been used for a certain exactly. function, a, a certain activity for, for a long time. Um, it's when you start to take that material and reinvent it and see it in a new light, um, and you wear it as fashion. That's that that's pretty interesting. I love that. Yeah, that's one of the stories that was told really well through design. It was like for me, maybe I have to explain to people a little bit, but for me as a designer, I was like, boom, this is how I can speak. Right. Right. How, how has it been? Um, you know, you've gotten a, you've, you've had a few years under your belt building a brand. Um, mm -hmm. what, what's the response been? I mean, from that first collection to now, um, you know, you've got a following, you've got people who recognize the brand, mm -hmm. um, and recognize what you're doing and, and people who I imagine anticipate the next drop, the next collection. Yeah, um, exactly. what is that experience like for you? Um, and kind of what are the current state of things um, with Okito brand? It's been really cool. You know, I would say, to be honest, my, as a designer, I didn't really feel the effect of my design and my business growing until I did the cool shoulder piece because that kind of resonated to way more people that are just fashion people. It was just like Utah jazz fans, Utah people, you know? So I would say that was the one that blew things up, that made it kind of put me on the map, I would say. And yeah, so far it's been awesome. You know, obviously people are asking me every day, when are you going to restock the cold shoulder? When are you going to restock the hoodie? But these kind of designs, I kind of want to keep it a little bit limited because they're so special to the story I told. You know, I don't want to just blast it everywhere. Like everyone's get, everyone get a cold shoulder. You get a cold shoulder. No, it's kind of like, if you know, you know, if you're about it, you're about it. I don't want it to be just like, oh yeah, I love this shirt. Well, it's done, you know? Right, right. So, and in the future, so well, currently we just did some, my first um, shoe collection this summer, which was amazing. I loved it. That was a dream of mine to make footwear. I mean, it was a lot of hard work, but it was so awesome to get the final product and touching it. It was like, it was like winning a championship almost, you know, mm -hmm. it's those moments. So we did that in this fall too we have some pieces lined up you know some pretty cool pieces some loud pieces some basic pieces so for the fall we're we're now we, we have down how we release our collection you know as a smaller brand i can't do what the other big brands are doing like doing the 
60 piece collection like supreme for the whole you know for the whole um fall winter do a 100 piece collection no right. so i realized i was like hmm so if i do let's say a drop every month or keep people interested and i still keep still get to release stuff every two weeks you know and once you're in it you probably you get it but when you're not you're just like where's the stuff bring me more stuff i just want to buy stuff then you know it's it's way more process in the back because you have to sample you have to test the product and that takes time right yeah totally um has your process changed over the last few years um yeah. you know, now that you you've built built um you know you you know, I think you've got, got more resources than, than you did when you started, you got more than the $75, right? You've, mm-hmm. you've learned things about yourself. Um, you've yeah. learned what works, what doesn't, um, you mm-hmm. know, over the last six years, um, yeah. what's changed in that process? It's gotten easier. Hmm. As you put more time, it gets easier. So for me, on the, in the end of Okido, it's a lot of copy and paste because it's patterns that are already done. I don't have to redo everything to make a t-shirt now, you know? So it's like, all right, we got this t-shirt, we got the pattern. All right, just do the design, submit. You don't have to sample, you know, the fabric, you know, you know, so it's more of a, you know, of a circle than zigzag trying to get to the product. Right. Yeah. So um, it's gotten e- easier, but also there's always new challenges, you know, when it comes to finance and keeping things organized and all that kind of stuff. It's, a challenge right I, I, at heart i'm just a designer you know right so running your own business is got to be interesting um i imagine sometimes you just want to design Ugh, tell me gotta, about it you got to pay taxes you got to ma- deal with logistics you got to market mm-hmm. you know yeah. um are, are you doing all of that do you have anyone else who's helping you um yeah you mentioned yeah. having a pattern maker for for some of the design side of things but what you know who else is involved now to be honest, it's just me and my wife. Yeah. Just me and my wife. We're running the business, you know, doing the taxes. My wife, you know, she's she's got an MBA in business. She knows a lot about business. So I handle her a lot of the business side, a lot of the, you know, um, financial decisions. I was running to her. So it's it's a team of two and we just do the best we, we do we we can with it. So I'm mostly like on a design aspect, you know, like I would show her like so many designs and she's like, all right, this one works. We don't sell much of these. These are cool. But you, you know, so we, yeah. you have to find the balance. Right. You can't just do, you can't try to do everything, you know, right. cause another mind is just another plus. Right. Um, I guess, you know, what is the, I guess uh, things have changed a lot in Salt Lake uh, mm-hmm. in the last few years. Um, do you, do you see a lot of opportunity for um, fashion brands? to develop uh, opportunity for that. I I imagine you'd welcome some of that, right? I I feel like developing a a stronger fashion culture in, in Salt Lake would be kind of a rising tide for everybody. Um, I will. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say um, with social media and Instagram, it has given a lot of people um, ways where they can see different outfits, where they can kind of dress for themselves and not have to wear basketball shorts and hoodie to school every time. That's growing up. That was my thing. And now I see kids that are, let's say I'm, I'm against fast fashion, like H and M and stuff, but they're giving people opportunity to dress a little different, to explore a little bit more, you know? Um, so I think that this is just worldwide, you know, it's not just, Salt Lake, because Salt Lake is a bigger city. They get it gets influenced by it, you know, whatever is out there. So I would give Salt Lake a lot of credit, actually. You know, there is there is sneaker groups, there is clothing groups, there's a bunch of designers here, photographers here. So I love it. I love it. I think the scene is is there. You just kind of have to go find it. You know, it's not gonna be in your face. So, but I think it's growing really well. Like. I love it because, hey, I'm in the business. More people, the more success. Right. I was going to say, um, it, it's been interesting. I, I, we've worked with this group, Redwire Manufacturing. 
I yes, don't know if you worked with them. Are. They're in Salt no, Lake. No, I haven't. And, yes. and mm-hmm. it seems like they kind of are focused in in that um, a lot of local prototyping, local uh, manufacturing, um, kind of a cut and sew facility. Um, mm-hmm. But it seems like a lot of them are focused on helping young up and up and coming fashion brands. Um, that's a resource that didn't exist when when you were getting started, right? To have your sampling <laughs> yeah. done so close. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it it just seems like it's a great great opportunity if if you want to create it and if you have that drive, all the tools that are at at your disposal to to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Like I'm so happy that there's such things like this because me starting out, I mean, I was in Logan, so I'm sure there's you know there's ways. There's always somewhere you can find resources, which is amazing. Right. Well, maybe, maybe it's just a last question. Um, mm-hmm. any like parting advice, um, for aspiring designers? Whew. All right. So if you've, so this is my thing, this is probably what I've said before too. If you've seen it being done, you can do it too. These people who have done it are not superheroes. I've met some designers that are way out high up there and they look at myself like, wow, that's amazing. But just because they have the name, people think they're like, you know, so if you've seen it done, you can do it too. Right. I that's, love that. that's the best thing I could say. Yeah, that's great. Well, mm-hmm. Gabby, you've been generous with, with the time. I appreciate you sharing a little bit of about course, your journey and, and uh, I always like to like to talk to, um, you know, people who who know Logan, who've spent time here. Um, yeah, Logan. So, you know, if people want to find you, uh, okitobrand.com and then yes. all over social, right? Yes, okitobrand.com and social is just at okitobrand, O-K-I-T-O, brand. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks again for taking the time. It's, it's great to finally talk to you and catch of up course. and learn about what you're working on. Mm-hmm.